Hey, hey guys, ready for some more chillin' games devloggy goodness? Well, too bad, you're getting it anyways. Previously on Chillin' Devlogs, are 2D sprites all we need as game objects? Will we ever hear about the making of the grid? And did he ever take a shower? Some of these answers and more on this episode of Jail Tactics Devlog. So I told you about putting the sprites into the 3D world and just giving them an angle, which looks great. There are some problems though. One being the sorting layers. But chillin', you said that you went 3D so you didn't have to deal with sorting layers. Yeah, viewer, I'm not happy about it either. But to be fair, it is much simpler. If you look at my sorting list, you'll see that it's very short. We have ground, which is the only sprite sitting at a zero rotation angle. So it has to remain as textures only, or just one flat color. You know, whatever you have time for. Background are sprites that sit on the ground texture, but really, that's the only thing that they render in front of. Then I have the intermediate layer. Here, it's called under interactables. This is for things like shadows, roads, or even things in front of the background like these cacti. Those are all very simple. All the complicated stuff happens here in the interactables layer. This is where the player and anything that interacts with the player lives. I know, I'm great at naming. The problem here is that you need to change their sort level when you walk in front or behind something. You'll always be rendered at the same level, causing clipping problems. So naturally, you can imagine how complicated this code is, right? Checking object transforms, comparing it with the player or anything else that's moving, choosing a point on the sprite that changes its levels, days of coding. Luckily, there's this little dropdown on the sprite render in Unity that sorts by pivot. So now you just have to worry about the pivot point when bringing in your sprite atlases and it will tell Unity when to change the level. Praise be to Unity. That said, I have had quite the wrestle with these pivot points. It also tells Unity where to render the sprite, so if you change the position of one pivot point in an animation frame, it'll mess that animation up completely. Also, if your width is different when making the sprite selection, you'll get a similar problem. These problems have led me to make borders for each frame of each animation I make. Doing this means I just have to keep the pivot point at the same distance from the bottom left and everything will work out. Well, not everything. This led to another problem, which I think is a bug in Unity. At certain resolutions you get tearing and you can see past the sprite selection border that you set out on your sprite sheet. So to solve this problem, I also make sure that there is a pixel of nothing between my borders. A lot of head smashing to get to this point, but I think I have a pretty good system now. So, I also have to give the objects in the interactable layer a collider so they are, well, actually interactable. I set the colliders to be a child of the player object so that I could have the sprite renderer on the main object and rotate it while still having the collider sitting at zero rotation. This way the colliders won't be on an angle and it will feel less like a Tony Hawk's ramp and more like a wall. This makes it so that I can't just phase through this building, but also, it's used for the battle initiation and data when the battle begins. I can also push the merchant around, you know, in case I feel like being a bully. Speaking of battles, I think it may be time to start talking about the grid. This is a bit of a monolith, what I've spent most of my time on so far, but since it's the base of my combat system, I feel like I want to spend the time here anyways, make sure that it's solid. Now, as always, when starting something new, I started with this led me to a few places, but the most helpful was definitely CodeMonkey. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. His tutorials are a little hard to follow since they are a bit linear and heavy code based, but I live in code, so that was fine for me. In fact, I didn't even really need that much, I just kind of needed the general idea and then I dove into making my own version. The general idea is that it's a 2D array, which was awesome to see. I know arrays, they're insanely simple to me. Boom, array, and this 2D loop, and you can easily do anything you want, grid style. Actually, if anybody wants a more tutorial-like video on this, just ask in the comments. I can whip one up pretty fast, though it's pretty much taken from CodeMonkey's tutorials. I've just seen some people struggling a bit with the concept and may be able to give a simpler approach to it. But the big picture is to use an array to store my grid prefab in position relative to each other. When this fella's interactive zone hits my player collider, I initiate my 2D array using the player's position as the center. To make this a little easier on your head, you can make the cells one game unit big. This way, the array object in position 1010 is 10 units to the X of the bottom right of the grid and 10 units to the Y. 
or the Z in my case. You can easily translate these grid positions to world positions and vice versa. Now I had a funny moment where I, for some reason, wanted the grid to be the same as an orthographic grid. As I explained in my last video, this means that I wanted the grid to not shrink as it went further away. I'm not sure why I wanted this just for the grid while having everything else as a perspective style, but I spent a lot of time messing around with the grid and code to try to get this effect. When I did, it didn't look great. Thinking back now, why would it look good? But it did expose me to all kinds of grid styles and where the squares are weirdly shaped or not perfectly in line. And at the very least, I can report to you all that they all look bad. Just go with the plain version. It looks great and is way simpler to work with. Always remember to follow your KISS principle. Well, that's all we have time for, so thank you for listening to my journey. Don't forget to share and like the video, comment if you think I should take a shower or not, and uh, check out my site, chillinggames.com, for more chillin' goodness.